Hello, this is composer Randall Standridge, and today we're going to be talking about how to and how not to commission a new work. So to start this, I would actually like to begin by telling you a very quick story. Several years back, I was asked to create a commission for a group in Central Texas who had been selected for an honors band performance. When they commissioned me to do the work, my first question, of course, was, what type of piece would you like? Their answer was, oh, whatever you want to write. And so I did. I wrote a piece that eventually became The Witching Hour. I delivered the piece, and within three hours, I received a phone call from the commissioning organization explaining that they could not accept this commission because it didn't fit what they needed for the program. And when I asked them to further clarify, they simply said, well, we were hoping for something a little bit faster and to open the concert with. This serves as a great illustration of a group that, while well-intentioned, really did not understand the commissioning process. So we're going to go step by step and talk about each facet and element that should go into creating a good experience for the commissioning party and for the composer who has been commissioned. Now, much like I mentioned with the previous example, it is very important to know what you want when you are going to commission a work. Now, I do want to start by first saying that if you don't know what you want, that's fine too. If you simply admire the work of a composer, you like their style, you like the things they have written, and you want to give them total creative freedom, then you should do that because that is perfectly fine and chances are you will get some of the most creative and out there music you've ever heard. But if you have a specific idea for the work or a specific function that the work must fulfill, this information should be communicated to the composer. Is the piece supposed to be a concert opener? Is the piece supposed to feature a soloist? Is the piece going to be used for the opening of a new facility or center? Is the piece in honor of someone living or someone who has passed? There are so many elements that can go into what makes a piece appropriate or not appropriate for a commission that, again, you need to be very upfront with the composer in determining what style of piece and what structure or what function the piece may have, if any. But again, if you want to leave it up to them, you know, just realize all bets are off. But if you need a specific function, a specific point in a program, this will help the composer make something that will definitely fulfill that and make you and them a lot happier. In addition to knowing what you want, another very important step in the process will be to know when you want it, as this should be a large determining factor for the composer if they will have time to produce a quality work for you or not. For all you know, they might be completely booked up in the time you need it, and any good composer will be very honest with you about this. So again, when coming to a decision about the commission, it is very important to know when the due date will be. The due date needs to be set in stone and communicated to the composer and when the premiere date will be, because chances are most composers like myself will be looking to capitalize on a commission once its function as a premiere for the organization has been completed. So it is very important to communicate the due date and the, um, the premiere date. Now again, the way that I work, which may be different from the way some other composers work, is that when a an organization asks me to do a commission, and my very first question is, when do you need it? What I am doing is checking my calendar to see what other commissions, other engagements, whether they be public or virtual, or just other life events I have going on to make sure that I will be able to deliver a product that I can be proud of. Generally speaking, for myself, I um, put on my calendar a you know range of dates that I feel will allow me to create a good work. Um, I lock these dates in to work on just that composition. And depending on the due date, it could be months in the future. 
Um, I do want to throw out there that you know most of the time composers are not starting to work on your work immediately unless it is the very next due date they are going to have to meet. For myself, I set aside that time, as I mentioned on the calendar, and once I get to that time, then I begin the hard work on that piece. So what essentially you're communicating to the composer is we need it by this date, you do whatever you need to do in the meantime to get that done. So again, have a due date and a premiere date in mind when contacting the composer. And now we come to the part of the conversation that almost nobody likes to talk about, which is, how much is this going to cost? Um, before you contact a composer, I would recommend that you have a budget and an amount that you can spend on this commission in mind. Now, when you approach the subject of price with a composer, many factors may go into the composer figuring out what the price of the commission should be for them. Because you do have to keep in mind that every composer is going to have a different pricing scale based on what they personally feel like their time is worth. So with that in mind, you do need to have a budget, a realistic budget um, that you can uh, depend on in order to determine if you will be able to afford the commission with the composer you are seeking. Um, some other factors that you might need to have ready would be the difficulty level, um, if you have any time requirements like this piece must be this long or it must include these you know, extra instruments that are not typically in, incorporated into the uh, regular uh, instrumentation. Um, so all of that and then the due date because if it's a rush job it may cost more. You know, And if it's way far out maybe they'll give you a little bit of a deal or they may not. But um, anyway it's very important to get all these factors because I know for myself, I take all of that into consideration when pitching a price. Once the price has been pitched, I would encourage you to be very careful about haggling with composers because it can come off as a little bit insulting. Um, now having said that, it, there is nothing wrong with being honest on how much you can spend. There is a big difference between telling somebody our budget is this and um, you should come down to this because that's all we can afford. Those are two completely different statements. Um, if somebody you know, told me just this is how much we had to spend and it wasn't within my price range, um, I still may not take on the commission, but I would not be insulted. But if somebody just told me, you know, we're going to do this, and even though you would normally charge 4000 you should really take 2000 for this, that is very condescending and insulting, and I would not recommend that approach at all. But again, just to reemphasize, there is nothing wrong with simply at the front of the conversation saying this is our budget, because then the ball is in the composer's park as to whether that fits into their pricing scale or not, and alleviates any need for you know, an uncomfortable conversation about trying to bring the price down. But still, have a budget in place. If it is going to depend on fundraising, um, you need to be able to guarantee that the composer will be paid for any work that you ask them to do. Um, just, you know, that's just uh, professional and respectful of their time and effort they're putting into this project. So have a very frank and honest discussion with your composer about price. Once you have determined the price, the due date, and the general nature of the piece, the next thing that should be discussed is the potential instrumentation, both in terms of makeup of the instrumentation, you know, what instruments and for whom, and then also the difficulty level uh, for even if it's for individual play players or for the ensemble as a whole. Um, this is an issue that I have come into uh, come across several times when doing commissions, where typically a director will be so in love with an idea that they have about a piece, that they are not being realistic about the ensemble that is going to premiere it. I'm um, speaking for composers, when, especially with a premiere, the first performance of a work, our desire is for it to sound as good as possible, as should be that for the director. So it sh you should be very, very realistic because I hate to break it to you, the band you have now is going to be the same band you will have when you do the premiere. Nothing magic is going to happen. Uh, your trumpets are not magically going to increase their range. 
the clarinets will suddenly not gain you know, more dexterity and your percussion will not suddenly be able to keep up with all of their music. You will have the same band kids you have right now once you do that premiere. Maybe a little bit more developed because being further down the year, but basically the same kids. You need to keep that in mind when you are commissioning a work. Um, my general you know, thought is whatever you're programming for festival um, or for any contests, about that same level. Um, that's, that's what I think would be appropriate for mo most commissions. Um, you also need to take into consideration how much time you are going to have to prepare for the premiere. Um, a piece written for a preparation period of two weeks is going to be wildly different, or should be, from a piece that will have a full two months of preparation before the premiere performance. So taking all of these into consideration when discussing instrumentation and instrumentation abilities. Then, you need to discuss the exact nature of the piece. Typically, this is a conversation that might happen once the composer has had a little bit of time to brainstorm. That is, unless you have a very, very specific idea of what you want. You know, see a few steps ago when we talked about that. Um, what I will usually do is I will come up with one or two, sometimes three or four ideas that I will pitch to the director based on the initial information they have given me. You as the commissioning party need to be very open to the ideas and creativity of the composer, but at the same time, you do need to be honest. If they pitch an idea that you simply don't like or that you find questionable for your ensemble, you need to be upfront about that and honest immediately before the composer begins spending any time on it. Um, so, for instance, if you, you know, want anything except a march, and one of the ideas the composer throws at you is a march, you need to kill that idea immediately because you're not going to be happy. And if you're not happy, the composer is not going to be happy. So we need to be very honest about that. Um, you know, and if, uh, if there's anything else with the piece in terms of uh, preferred soloists, um, preferred sections to feature, preferred sections to hide, um, you know, this needs to be communicated as well. Um, so when discussing the nature of the piece, um, you should definitely, you know, take all that into consideration. The last thing I will say is I would strongly encourage you to not um, reference one of the other com composer's other pieces and say, we want something like that. Because chances are the composer has already, you know, written that, gotten that out of their system, and creatively they have moved on. Um, there's nothing wrong with referencing a work and saying we liked that, or giving them, you know, we liked these pieces. Um, but you know, if you insist, you know, well, we want you to write, you know, something pretty much like that. Um, you, I mean, most composers can do that, but they're probably, you know, not going to be terribly excited about it, and you're not going to be bringing, you know, their A game. Uh, plus, if you leave, the, the more open you leave yourself for whatever the composer's ideas are, the more unique, the more creative, and the more out of the box you're going to get something. Think of this as being kind of like an outfit, you know. Something that is off the rack is going to be very plain, kind of size fits all, everything else. But for me, with a commission, you want something that is more couture, something more made just for you and special. So with that in mind, I would encourage you to give the composer some information and, you know, maybe give some, you know, direction to the general ideas and content of the piece. But other than that, let them just be creative and bring their voice to your piece. Once the piece has been completed, most composers will send you a sample score and uh, probably MIDI recording. And this is your opportunity to really go line by line, note by note through the piece and make sure that it fits your ensemble. Here is what I would call appropriate and inappropriate critique of a work by a composer. Things at this point that would be appropriate. Um, it, would, it would be appropriate to address range. For instance, if your brass players have limited range, um, you know, then that might be important information if you see the piece taking them outside that range consistently. Um, if the, you know, if it's showing off weaknesses as opposed to strengths, there is nothing wrong at this point with asking the composer to do some reorchestration to better highlight the best qualities of your ensemble. Um, another 
idea you might talk about is, is the piece too long or is it too short? Does it fit the goals that you set forth initially with the piece? Um, you know, review it for all of that, all of those things. Does the compu uh, composer need to add in any cueing? Um, so, for instance, you know, you've got horns, but they're not your strongest. Do they need to be doubled somewhere else or cued so that you can possibly keep the same orchestral intent, but have that backup just in case you need it? Um, lastly, um, it, you know, it would be fine to give some what I would call light creative technique, or excuse me, critique, light creative critique. Um, if there are sections that you just strongly feel are aesthetically questionable, there is nothing wrong with talking to the composer about that and trying to resolve any problems. What may or may not be okay, depending on the composer, and this is where you will need to approach carefully and know the type of composer you are dealing with, would be what I call um, composition by proxy. So in other words, if you hear an idea in your head like, oh, this should have a fanfare, or oh, there should be a percussion moment here, um, you can suggest that, but you do need to be ready for the composer to reject that, because what you are then doing is you are impressing your aesthetic onto their work, and they may or may not hear it the same way. Um, so I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with making suggestions, but I would be very hesitant about making demands at that point. If, if these are things that have not been discussed in the work prior to the composer creating this. You have to realize that every single composer has a different aesthetic point of view. We have a different artistic idea. And for instance, if you asked me to, if you had the same idea and asked me and Julie Giroux and John Mackey and Brian Balmages all to write the same piece, you would get four completely different works, each one valid in its own way. But each one of us has our own aesthetic, our own taste, our own style of orchestration, and that is what makes each of us a unique musical voice. Be very careful during the critique process about trying to impress your aesthetic vision onto the composer's aesthetic vision. So that would be my advice for that. Lastly, if you are going to ask for any rewrites or um, you know big changes, make sure you get these back to the composer well before you will need the piece. No composer likes to receive these and the note of, oh, by the way, we need this tomorrow. Uh, be respectful of a composer's time, and I assure you, if you do that, they will be respectful of yours, and make communications as soon as possible. This is the end of this video. I hope you have found this information to be helpful, enlightening, and maybe will motivate you to um, want to do a commission. Um, I, you know, sp speaking for myself, I am always excited to receive new commissions. It's always fun to take on a new project, and I am sure that other composers feel the same way. So good luck, happy music making, and as always, peace, love, and music.